Hello and welcome back to the van and welcome back to the channel actually I've not uploaded for about six months uh, but hopefully that changes from today you join us here today because I want to talk about the five things that I don't like about this van now some of these might apply to you but some of these are actually specific to us as a family and the first one starts here in the cab and it involves the cab seat now we chose the cab seat because it serves a purpose. Number one, we're a family of three and we can all sit up front. Although that does sometimes have its challenges. Mm. And number two, this doubles up as Ollie's bed. We've got one of those inflatable sort of inflatable mattresses with a sleeping bag sort of all in one. And that sits across the front. And this is your bedroom, isn't it? Mm. Ideally what I would have wanted is the single seat, the single swivel seat. So someone can sit here, two people at the back, and it opens up that space. But I can't seem to find a double cab swivel seat. So for now, this will have to do. So yeah, there's pros and cons to this. It works for us, but in another sense, it doesn't work for us. Anyway, let's move on to number two. So number two starts back here. And you know what it's like, you get comfy, you're in your bed, and then all of a sudden, this happens. I'm thirsty. And that opens up a whole new list of problems. Let me show you. So you, all your kids have decided they want a drink. Now the problem with that is, the fridge is under there, and you can't access it whilst the bed's down in this position. Now the bed's up, you can now get to your fridge. Drink secured. And this is all well and good, whilst it's a day like today, but imagine it's raining. <laughs> right, thank you Ollie for that demonstration. <laughs> Right, let's get back in the van. Number three, you're back in your bed, you're all comfy, you've got your drinks, and then this happens. I'm hungry. And that once again has its own challenges because the fridge is covered by the bed. So you're back outside and it's time to put the bed back up. And that's fine on a day like today, but imagine it's raining. Thank you all for that demonstration again. Nice. At least I'm not getting wet. Right, so we're back in the van. You've got your drinks, you've got your snacks. Now, I didn't have any fridge food props so these Chris will have to do. But what if you're wanting to make something on the hob and cook a proper meal? That leads us in to number four. So yeah, number four, you've decided you want to do a proper meal and you go to use the hob and this happens. And you've realized you've not turned the gas on. Please. And yet you guessed it, to turn the gas on, you've got to go outside. So open this up and then turn the gas on. And again, this is fine when we've got a day like today, but imagine it's raining. <laughs> oh no. K-O. Yeah, you're gonna have a pretty bad time. Now don't get me wrong, a lot of these could be solved by a bit of planning. The fridge situation, for instance, if you pre-plan that, you could get your drinks out and get your food out. But if you're like me, I'm forgetful and you will not plan ahead. Or if you're a parent and you've got kids, there's no planning what they're gonna think next. 
You could ask them one minute if they're hungry, they say no, and within 30 seconds, they're hungry. Same with the gas. As soon as you pull up, you could get out, put the gas on. And also, the situation with the rain, that wouldn't be a problem if you were at a campsite, because more than likely, you'll have an awning on the side. But if you parked up at the side of the road, or if you're sort of stealth camping, as they like to say, that's not an option. So for all three of those things, getting the drinks out the fridge, getting the food out the fridge or the cupboard, putting the gas on, you have to put the bed up for two of those and you have to go round the back to put the gas on. Right, let's move on to number five, which is kind of a five, six and seven. So yeah, 5.1 is the van itself. Now, the van's great, but there's just a couple of issues that kind of annoy me about it. And I don't know if this is the same for other vans in this category, but the miles to gallon is pretty bad. On a normal day, if I'm running around 35 miles to the gallon, maybe on a long run, I might be able to stretch that to 37, 38. But I've come from two cars that used to get 60 miles to the gallon. So yeah, the fuel cost to run this is pretty high. This particular engine isn't great in terms of power. I think it's about 98 horsepower. They do a couple of variations. I think the higher one they do is a 130. I'll double check that just to confirm. But yeah, it feels massively underpowered. If this started its life off as a 98 horsepower van, I mean, it's what, it's a 2016, so it's definitely lost some power. I've added all this weight. It just feels slow. And when I say slow, I mean, you pull up to a junction and you need to see if anyone's within a mile radius to be able to pull out. Now, again, this could be solved with either a remap or you look out for the bigger horsepower van. That's fine, but that's your choice. There's a kitty. Baby. Kitty. <laughs> what we're on 5.3 now is the size there's a lot of pros to having a van this size you can use it as your daily driver it fits in parking spaces pretty nicely but the cons of a van this size is it does feel quite cramped the final thing i want to mention is is just the popularity of these vans now it's obviously not a volkswagen transporter and that comes with its own challenges as well when I was trying to find the blinds, I ended up having to get custom blinds made. The swivel seat that I mentioned earlier, trying to find a double cab swivel seat, non-existent. Whereas if you had a more popular van, there's a range of accessories available. I need to keep reminding myself that this was a fraction of the cost of a Volkswagen Transporter, especially on this year with these miles. And that sort of concludes my five. Was that a wasp or a bee? That sort of concludes my five or six, seven, eight issues that I've got with the van that I've noticed in my 12 months of ownership. But like I said, a lot of them could be solved and a lot of them might not even apply to you, but they do apply to us and it can be a bit of a pain. Now, just before I sign off, I just want to say uh, earlier, as I mentioned, I'm not uploaded in six months and that should change from today. I've got a couple of things coming up. If you hear from the... If you hear from the Coast to Coast video, I do have a bikepacking trip coming up. So stay around for that. If you hear from the hiking videos, I've got a wild camp next week. And then I've also got a two or three day hike coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and if you hear from the camper video, we're definitely going to be using this this year, aren't we? For some day yeah. trips and stuff. You coming with me? Yeah. So yeah, lots of things to look forward to and hopefully I'll not leave it six months this time. But now, what are we doing now? We're going to explore a cave, aren't we? Or a tunnel? Yeah. Yeah, any final, any final thoughts? Any final words you want to say? No. No? Yeah. That's that then. <laughs> See ya. Oh my god.
God. It looks like it's been abandoned. Oh wait, it has. <laughs> oh my God, wow. Why is there walls? I thought we were in the walls in the gas tank. Someone's exhaust. Oh God. Do not stand on that. that oh God, I'm sinking, Ali. I'm sinking. This is so risky. This is so risky. It's so risky.